नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो टुडे वी बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 1 चैप्टर 10 टेक्स 20 सो दिस चैप्टर इज एंटाइटल्ड डिपार्चर ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण फॉर द वर्क उत्तम श्लोक चेत कौरवेन्द्रपुरश्रुति मनोहरा अन्यासीजल्प 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 उत्तम श्लोक चेत कौरवेन्द्रपुरश्रीना सर्वश्रुति मनोहरा अन्यासीजल्प उत्तम श्लोक चेत सर्वश्रुति मनोहरा अन्यासीजल्प उत्तम श्लोक चेत कौरवेन्द्रपुरश्रुति मनोहरा अन्यासीच अदर असी there was sanjalpaha talking uttama sloka the supreme who is praised by selected poetry chetasa of those whose hearts are absorbed in that way kaurava indra the king of the kurus pura capital strinam all the ladies sarva all shruti the vedas manaha hara attractive to the mind translation and proper by his divine grace shri the prabhupada translation observed in the thought of the transcendental qualities of the lord 
who is sound in, in select poetry, the ladies on the roofs of all the houses of Hastinapur began to talk of him. This talk was more attractive than the hymns of the Vedas. Purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that in all the Vedic literatures, the goal is the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Factually, the glories of the Lord are depicted in such literature as the Vedas, Ramayana, and Mahabharata. And in the Bhagavatam, they are specifically mentioned in respect to the Supreme Lord. Therefore, while the ladies on the tops of the houses in the capital of the kings of the Kuru dynasty were talking about the Lord, their talk was more pleasing than the Vedic hymns. Anything sung in the praise of the Lord is Shruti Mantra. There are songs of Thakur Nartam Das, one of the Acharyas in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, composed in simple Bengali language. But Thakur Vishana Chakravarti, another very learned Acharya of the same Sampradaya, has approved the songs by Thakur Nartam Das to be as good as Vedic mantras. And this is so because of the subject matter. The language is immaterial, but the subject matter is important. The ladies, who are all absorbed in the thought and actions of the Lord, developed the consciousness of Vedic wisdom by the grace of the Lord. And therefore, although such ladies might not have been very learned scholars in Sanskrit or otherwise, still whatever they spoke was more attractive than the Vedic hymns. The Vedic hymns in the Upanishads are sometimes indirectly directed to the Supreme Lord. But the talk of the ladies were directly spoken of the Lord, and thus they were more pleasing to the heart. The ladies' talks appear to be more valuable than the learned Brahmanas' benedictions. <clears throat> Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Shalakaya Jakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurve namaha Vande ham shri gurum shri yuta pada kamalam Shri gurun vaishnavamscha Shri rupa sagrajatam sahagana ragunatan vitam tam sajivam Sadvaitam savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sthate Devi Pranamami Hare Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Vishnu Pada Krishna Pashtaya Bhutala Shimati Shri Vrabhava Pavuiti Namine Shri Shri Vrinda Tavi Vira Pada Pasanka Jadayane Pavupada Nupada Nama Shri Vrabhava Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namini Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pachaya Nini Vishesha Sinyavani Pascha Chateshitani Hare Krishna So here just before Lord Krishna's departure for Dwarka he was just about to there were glorifications as in today's verse, from the 
from the ladies glorifying the Lord. And it's addressed by the word Srinam. So on several places in the Vedic literatures, I, uh, I notice it's there, Sri or Srinam, like that. And I became curious to know if there is any particular context of womanhood that's being addressed here. Because every place where they're addressed like this, it talks about a very elevated activity or quality. <coughs> so, um, I thought of checking with our, our fountainhead and genius of, of, of Gaudiya Vaishnav culture, uh, Srila Jiva Goswami, and I found this in his uh, Tattva Sandarbha. It's the Sandarbha Anucheda 26.2. <clears throat> it says here that there are three ways to instruct. One, like a king. Two, like a friend. Or three, like a beloved. The Vedas instruct like a king, giving direct instructions. The Puranas teach like a friendly, like a friend by giving stories which have a moral. And books of Sahitya, Indian literature, teach indirectly. This is described as like a lover. Because traditionally, <coughs> a girlfriend or wife who used to have reverence for her husband or beloved did not consider it appropriate to give direct instructions. Instead, she would speak with indirect uh, inondo or in an implied manner. Srimad Bhagavatam uses all three techniques. So here is one of that technique being applied here of uh, these ladies glorifying the Lord. <coughs> Indirectly, it's indicating that rather than giving instructions directly, but by so glorifying, they're instructing us that this is what one should do. This is the highest perfection of the Vedic culture of spirituality of Krishna consciousness, to glorify the Lord. So this is in one direct way, which Srila Prabhupada referred to towards the end of this purport. It says, but the talk of the ladies were directly spoken of the Lord, and thus it were more, they were more pleasing to the heart. So, so by directly speaking about the glories of the Lord, it's giving an indirect instruction to everyone else as to what one's activities should be. So, one question that came to my mind and what Srila Prabhupada addressed here in the very first uh, sentence of this purport is to, uh, what are the qualifications of these ladies that brings them to this conclusion? How qualified are they? to give the essence of all, all Vedic knowledge. So, before I go to that, uh, here it's stated in the very first ch sentence that in the Bhagavad Gita, that's how Srila Prabhupada started, it is said that in all the Vedic literatures, the goal is the Supreme Personality of God, it's Sri Krishna. So, in reference to that, we can go to Bhagavad Gita, uh, 1515. Let me see if I can. Oh, I have it right here. I have to back up the Gita right here. Where this is described. Sarvasa Chaham Ridi Sani Visto. So, translation I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, 
and I am the knower of the Vedas. So, so for one to, to glorify the Lord the way these ladies are, glorifying in Hastinapur, they just can't do it blindly, it's just not practical. You have to have knowledge, you have to have understanding, you have to know the conclusion. You have to go through the process to understand that. So, I'd like to read part of this purport, it's pretty long. So the Supreme Lord is situated in Par as Paramatma in everyone's heart, and it is from Him that all activities are initiated. The living ent entity forgets everything of his past life, but he has to act according to the direction of the Supreme Lord, who is witness to all his work. Therefore, he begins his work according to his past deeds. Required knowledge is supplied to him, and, he remem and remembrance is given to him, and he forgets also about his past. Thus, the Lord is not only all-pervading, he is also localized in every individual's heart. He awards the different fruitive results. He is worshipable not only as the impersonal Brahman and the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the localized Paramatma, but as a form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. The Vedas give the right direction to people so that they can properly mold their lives and come back home back to Godhead. The Vedas offers knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, and Krishna in his incarnation as Vyasadeva is a compiler of the Vedas. So this is the point that I want to make, that, that the Vedas give the right direction, and um, that direction is to come to the proper conclusion as to the purpose of the Vedas, which is what these ladies are giving here. So with, with any source of knowledge, they, like if one is going to college, then they actually gives you an idea as to what the end result will be, what you're supposed to achieve. This is going to be the result, this is going to be the conclusion. But you cannot just get it, you have to go through the motion to achieve it. But you're giving the conclusion. So I remember when I was uh, a teenager, before I joined Krishna Consciousness, I wanted so badly to go to college, to go to engineering school. But I had several disqualifications. I was living in the country and the college was in the, the capital city. My parents were extremely poor, couldn't have afforded. And above everything else, I was not in politics. And in those days, unless you were in politics and be with the ruling political party, then you can't get any facilities. So then I thought, let me at least look into it and see what I would have achieved. So I start looking to that and then I give all these these exciting conclusions as, as having an engineering degree, all the knowledge you'll have and all what and what you'll be able to do. So similarly, the Vedas are like that. They give so much knowledge from all different angles. And it also tells you the conclusion that this is what you're going to achieve. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But you don't get it just like that. You have to work for it. Similar like going to college, you know what the conclusion would be, but they just don't give you that certificate. You have to go through the motion, you have to be qualified, and you have to go there to get it. So the Vedic scriptures are like that, <clears throat> that everything is there, all the conclusions and the directions are there. So much so that Krishna directly tells you in the Bhagavad Gita, tomorrow Krishna Jayanti, you know, it is all direct instructions from Krishna, that this is the conclusion that of all the Vedas, I am to be known. So if you go through the Vedic scriptures and you don't achieve me as knowledge, then something is wrong. So it's so easy, we can't expect anything easier, that Krishna is giving direct knowledge. He's telling you, he's giving you the conclusion, he's telling you what to expect. So what else can we ask for? You know, he's giving everything that this is what you have to achieve. <clears throat> but to achieve it again is not a, it's just going to happen like that. So similarly with, so with, these, with these ladies who are glorifying the Lord, it's not that they just reached that stage or they just happened to be in that situation. <clears throat> no, there was a process. 
So, I would like to go to the Bhagavatam. Um, in Canto 3, text chapter 33. And this is the instructions of Lord Kapila. Sorry, this is 31. Let's see where it is, 33. Which verse is it? 7, I believe. Yes. So 3337. <coughs> Here Lord Kapila's mother, Devuti, she's saying, Oh, how glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if born in the families of dog eaters, such persons are worshipable. Persons who chant the holy name of your lordship must have executed all kinds of austerities and fire sacrifices and achieved all the good manners of the Aryans. To be chanting the holy name of your lordship, they must have bathed at all holy places of pilgrimage, studied the Vedas and fulfilled everything required. So many, many times we heard Srila Prabhupada would reference this and mention that when one chants Hare Krishna or describing the glories of the Lord, as in this case what the ladies of Hastinapur are doing, to, because the name, fame, form, pastimes of the Lord are non different. So, this describing, talking about the qualities of the Lord is equal to chanting his holy names. There are no difference. So, for one to do that, it means that one has to have a lot of qualifications. They, pass through all these qualifying processes. So these ladies that apparently are just chanting the holy names or glorifying the Lord, even, even though like Srila Prabhupada described in that purport that they might not be learned scholars or uh, have studied the Vedic scriptures, but it under, it's understood that maybe not in that lifetime they haven't done so, but in previous lifetimes they have gone through all this, this purification process and this study process, and they're able to come to that conclusion that this is what one has to do. This is, these are the activities. So I'll read a part of this purport also. As it is stated in the previous verse, a person who has once offenselessly chanted the holy name of God becomes immediately eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices. One should not be astonished by this statement of Srimad Bhagavatam. One should not bis disbelieve or think, quote, how by chanting the holy name of the Lord can one become a holy man to be compared to the most elevated Brahmana, end of quote. To eradicate such doubts in the minds of non-unbelievers, this verse affirms that the stage of chanting the holy name of the Lord is not sudden, but that the chanters have already performed all kinds of Vedic rituals and sacrifices. It is not very astounding, for no, no one in this life can chant the holy name of the Lord unless he has passed all lower stages, such as performing the Vedic ritualistic sacrifices, studying the Vedas and practicing good behavior like that of the Aryans. All this must first have been done. Just as a student in a law class is to be understood to have already graduated from general education, anyone who is engaged in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, must have already passed all lower stages. It is said that those who simply chant the holy name with the tip of the tongue are glorious. One does not even have to chant the holy name and understand the, holy, the whole pr procedure. Namely, the offensive stage, offenseless stage, and pure stage. If the holy name is sounded on the tip of the tongue, that is also sufficient. 
It is said herein that Nama, a single number, one name, Krishna or Ram, is sufficient. It is not that one has to chant all the holy names of the Lord. The holy names of the Lord are innumerable, and one does not have to chant all the names to prove that he has already undergone all the processes of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. If one chants only once, it is to be understood that he has already passed all the examinations, not to speak of those who are chanting always, 24 hours a day. It is specifically said here, to Biam, unto you only. One must chant God's name, not as the Mayavadi philosophers say, any name, such as demigod's name, or names of God's energies. Only the holy name of the Lord, Supreme Lord, will be effective. Anyone who compares the holy name of the Supreme to the names of the demigods is called Pasandi, or an offender. <clears throat> anyway, so it, it goes on. So here Srila Prabhupada is giving a, giving a, a what we can say, some more details of this explanation as to what one's qualification is when one acts in the standard of glorifying the Lord. That is not out of any level of foolishness or any randomness, but no, it's a, it's a great scientific process and qualification that one passes through. And being able to adopt this process. So when one does that, it should be understood that he or they understood the conclusion of the Vedic literatures which is very vast, and when, it, when one starts with the Vedic scriptures, you might have indirect knowledge, or knowledge of this war, knowledge of science, and so forth, that gradually brings you to this point. And it is not something so easy to achieve. Srila Prabhupada said many, many times that Krishna consciousness is not easy. Even though it's an easy process, simply chant the Lord's holy names and follow some simple rules and regulations. It's an easy process, but to achieve the standard is not so easy. The other day I was speaking with one close friend. To the rituals and don't achieve the conclusion because it is not easy. So in this purport also there's an indirect reference to again the Bhagavatam in the Ajamil story. Um, I think that's 6319. Let's see if we can find that. Duties described for mankind, 6, 3, 19. Let me see if this is the one. Yeah, Dharma to Saksa Bhagavad Panitam. I, I remember many years ago there was one devotee giving class. Uh, Sunday feast lecture and uh, he was speaking on this verse and he ran out of ideas. So he said, and Krishna says, Dharma tu saksat Bhagavat Pranitam and you elaborate on them. <laughs> so he said, you just elaborate and you can come to the conclusion and he finished, finish, end of class. So anyway, this translation says, real religious principles are enacted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although fully situated in a mode of goodness, even the great rishis who occupy the topmost planets cannot ascertain the real religious principles, 
nor can the demigods or the leaders of Siddhalok to say nothing of the Asuras, ordinary human beings, Vijayadars and Charnas. So this is Yamaraj talking to his messengers, the Yamadutas. And here is Srila Prabhupada's purport. This gives you an idea of how difficult it is going through the Vedic scriptures. When challenged by the Vishnu Dutas to describe the principles of religion, the Yamadutas said, Veda Pranihito Dharma. The religious principles are the principles enacted in the Vedic literature. They did not know, however, that the Vedic literature contains ritualistic ceremonies that are not transcendental, but are meant to keep peace and order among materialistic persons in the material world. Real religious principles are nistrigunya, above the three modes of material nature, or transcendental. The Yamadutas did not know these transcendental religious principles, and therefore, when prevented from arresting Ajamil, they were surprised. Materialistic persons who attach all their fate to the Vedic rituals are described in Bhagavad Gita 242, wherein Krishna says, Veda Vada Rata, Parta Nanyar Astiti Vadina. The supposed followers of the Vedas say that there is nothing beyond the Vedic ceremonies. Indeed, there is a group of men in India who are very fond of the Vedic rituals, not understanding the meaning of these rituals, which are intended to elevate one gradually to the transcendental platform of knowing Krishna, Vedaisya Sarvair Aham Eva Veja, that refers back to Bhagavad Gita 1515. So these, all these verses that I'm using here, along with, you know, with today's verse, all tied together. Those who do not know this principle, but who simply attach their faith to the Vedic rituals, are called Veda Vada Rataha. And then it, I'll read this other part here, continues. Herein it is stated that the real religious principle is that which is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That principle is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Parichaja Ma Me Kam Sharnam Raja, Bhagavad Gita 1866. One should give up all other duties and surrender unto the lotus feet of Krishna. That is the real religious principle everyone should follow. Even though the Vedic even though the, one follows Vedic scriptures, one may not know this transcendental principle, for it is not known to everyone. To say nothing of human beings, even the demigods in the upper planetary systems are unaware of it. This transcendental religious principle must be understood from the Supreme Personality of God directly or from his special representative, as stated in the next verses. So, this is as clear as daylight Srila Prabhupada is giving. What more can we ask for? It's very, very clear. Srila Prabhupada is giving that not only, you know, not, not only we are finding it difficult to understand, but even the demigods, even all these elevated personalities, it's difficult to understand. And why? Mainly because the, of the failure to accept the proper direction. And what's the source of that direction? Srila Prabhupada described in this purport. It's the expert spiritual master that gives the direct conclusion of the knowledge of Vedic scriptures. So that's why it's so important that we accept this standard. And for us, <coughs> To say that we accept it is one thing, to practice it is another because whilst we understand that once, once one surrenders to the spiritual master, that we are climbing this ladder or this hill to the top of the, the hill, top of the mountain, which if one draws it on a paper, is just going to be like a straight line that we, one is climbing this mountain, going to the top to achieve the conclusion. 
But in reality, it's not a straight line. It's like you hear the stories of these um, mountain climbers and hikers. They're climbing, but when they go, sometimes there's a dip, and sometimes they go a little lower, they rest for a while, or, and then they try to climb again. So in conclusion, you're going up, but it's not like one straight road. There are many hiccups on the way. There are bumps and hills, and you're going to have a depression. Sometimes you fall back down a little bit. You're like 2,700 feet. You might drop back to 2,600 feet, and then you keep going up. So <coughs> our Krishna conscious practice is something like that, that many times, and I know for me it happens so many times, that in practicing, sometimes we may have a, a little fall down, we have a setback, we have some trouble with our minds that give us some setback or some physical activities. And so we're going to achieve some level of Krishna consciousness, we practice, then at a certain point, we might have a little bit of a hold up. And up to this morning, my wife and I were talking about this one devotee who was so dear to us from day one. We were always praying that when he would come back fully to Krishna consciousness, to take her back that standard he once had, at least what we know of. And um, so, you know, like that, there are some hiccups, and sometimes those hiccups might last for a while, at least to our calculation. We are living only for a short time in this world, maybe 50, 60, 70 years. So a 10-year holdup might appear to be a very long time for us. In terms of eternity, it's a different story. It might only be a few moments, or a half a moment or something like that. <clears throat> so Krishna consciousness is like that. So as we practice, we're going to have a lot of bumps on the road. Like my father's philosophy, which I don't understand, but it kind of makes sense. His philosophy is that if the road isn't rough, the ride can't be smooth. So, I, don't know, I don't know what that means, but it makes sense. That if there aren't obstacles on our path, then we, we can take things for granted, we can take things cheaply. And next thing, we might be up there, but we don't know how to value it. Just like you have a, a rich man's child will get all this luxury but they don't know how to value it. They don't know how to care it, to maintain. They may squander it out. And next thing you know, they realize, uh-oh, we have lost almost everything. And then they start to scramble to try to get it back. Like, there was this one, I read this, this one uh, book one time with this, this guy who told his, his true story that he was, uh, he was the son of a very rich man. And he got so much inheritance. And he just got it like a silver spoon in his mouth. He didn't know how to care for it, and he squandered everything out. Next thing he knew, that he was in a different country, had nothing, was totally homeless. Then he was taken in by one, some man with a horse farm. And he said the man was very merciful to him, that he gave him a job to clean the horse poop. But he was always remembering what he had and how he lost it and all his mistakes that he made. So then he started to work very hard. And lo and behold, by dint of his karma, within a few years, he was able to save and reestablish a, a business that by the end of another 20 years, he was almost as rich as what he was when his father gave him that wealth. So. Once he recognized what he has lost, then he strived towards it. So, so sometimes when the road is rocky, we're able to value. So Krishna consciousness is like that. So when we're able to come in the association of where devotees are glorifying the Lord, we should understand that this is an extremely sacred atmosphere we're in. Like this morning, my wife called and one Mataji, and then immediately at the back of my mind, I started uh, thinking, I'm sorry, I mean, I started thinking, what is she going to talk about? And in, immediately she said, oh, you know, the deities are so beautiful. And then that kind of hits me, like, you know, just see how fortunate we are to be in an association where devotees are glorifying the Lord, where devotees are discussing the pastimes and the, the glories, which is non-different from chanting the Lord's holy names. 
It's such a fortunate situation to be in this atmosphere. So, to be in an atmosphere like these ladies are um, creating here in Hastinapur, that with all it might be generally in Vedic culture, you don't find like the ladies with the qualifications or be so much in the forefront. But by these activities, we can understand that they are actually in the forefront, just like with the gopis, that the gopis are described to be the, the greatest of Brahmins, the greatest of Vedic scholars, have the highest education, because why? They understood the conclusion, to worship, serve, and glorify the Lord. Just like the wives of the Brahmanas, they understood that the purpose of their practice and Vedic knowledge is to provide for the Supreme Lord. So when their husbands were approached to give food to the Lord, they didn't recognize, they didn't, they didn't accept, they didn't provide. When the ladies were approached, they immediately give. So this, is, this gives us an understanding that you know, what we're doing, what we're studying, what's the purpose of it? So in essence of today's verse, that's one thing that I gather, that what's the essence of Vedic scriptures? Srila Prabhupada gave in a nutshell here. So, I would like to stop there, and if anyone has anything to add, comments, criticism, questions, please. Mm. So anyway, doesn't look like there are any... Oh, Shesha Prabhu has a question, or comment. Hare Krishna Guru. Oh, Hare so, Krishna. So is it that if we just say we're going Hare now and there's a person walking down the street and we get them to chant Hare Krishna, so are they described in this verse as being knowledgeable of all the Vedas and all the high mm -hmm. qualifications that are mentioned? Are, are they, because they chant, are they evidence that they've done that? Or is it some other qualification that's needed? Um, based on Srila Prabhupada's teachings, it's yes, that, that it should be <clears throat> understood that they have passed through a lot of qualifications, even though it might be indirect or, they, or that person might not be conscious of it. But the mere fact that they were able to accept the name of the Lord and chant that name that it's a, it's a taste and qualification that what they have. And they're in the reviving process, like what we were describing about walking up the mountain. There's some fall downs, there's some hiccups. So many of those people, as what we can see in Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON movement, and you're one typical example, that as soon as you're exposed to Krishna consciousness, the holy names, you immediately took to it, whilst many other people didn't. So there's a reason why you took to that. Because you had all these, these pre-qualifications, just waiting for that moment when it can be revived. So Srila Prabhupada said Krishna consciousness is not something what, what we develop, it's something that we revive. It's already there, it's dormant, and we revive it when the, when the appropriate moment comes. So my understanding is, yes, that if one accepts and chants the holy name, even if it's only once, it is understood that they have a great qualification. While sometimes you see many other people, you give them the holy name, but they don't accept, they would prefer to stick with rituals. So that is my take on that. Can you give a comment yourself? As to Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? So, so I guess Yes, I guess we can stop here. Srimad Bhagavatam ki